Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, my name is Sean, and I'll be speaking with Yannick, who will come shortly, about uh, scaling Web3 with StarkNet and React Native. Um, I know this conference mostly was about React Native, so I'm glad to be speaking something about Web3, which is what a lot of other people outside of this conference might be talking about. And um, I, I would like to thank um, Software Mansion for being such gracious hosts, and also uh, Software for giving us this opportunity to speak with you today. So a brief introduction about uh, Yannick and I. Um, we started the library uh, StarknetJS. Um, I also work on a lot of open source projects like um, blockchain CLI, coin CLI, and also built a lot of products on, around the architecture of blockchain under the hood. So if you want to you know, study or look, look at the technology a little bit more deeply, feel free to check out my open source repos or some of the websites that I've, I've built. And Yannick, he's also a core contributor at, uh, to StarkNet.js. He's uh, one of the lead engineers at Argent, um, and they built Argent X, which is the first wallet on top of StarkNet. And he also contributes to open source and some of the libraries that we love, like Next.js. So before I, I sort of really dig deep into it, um, I sort of want to give a broad overview of why should I even care about Web3, right? Like you probably read about Web3 in the news, um, on TV, but why should I even like really care about this, this sort of new technology? So I think the fundamental thing about um, Web3 is you actually get ownership of digital assets. Right? And you don't just get ownership, but you also own uh, digital assets, and you can participate in the economy um, very permissionlessly. Right? No, nobody needs to give you permission for you to participate in this economy, and it's also, it's also extremely secure. So if there is some sort of vulnerability, usually it's, it's only on the individual rather than the whole system. So I, I, I'll go into more detail about each of these topics, but I think um, for the first time, we really had some sort of ownership on the internet, and I think that's extremely, um, that's extremely interesting. So in terms of ownership, like you, you sort of own assets on the internet. Um, prove, like it's proven with um, mathematics and cryptography, right? Like some of, of you guys know, use Git, so you might know like you have a public key and a private key, and basically, um, in the blockchain database, you have a public, your public address that says you own uh, 10 bitcoins, and then you have your private key to actually verify that you're actually the owner of, uh, of some sort of digital value. Right? So this, this really gives you um, personal ownership of digital assets on the internet. So you don't actually need to go to a bank to open a bank account. Right? You don't need to go through like, so much paperwork and read all the fine print. Um, so, and you don't need a bank to tell you that you have $500 in the funds, right? You don't need to go to a bank to withdraw your money, and then your, your value is also not owned by a company, right? Like Facebook doesn't own all of your data, and also um, if you're in World of Warcraft playing a game, right, it's like Blizzard that owns sort of all the, all the value inside the ecosystem. You can't really bring that value outside and sort of trade with other, other games or other, other other assets. And also, your, your value is not owned by the government also, right? Like, a lot of these days, uh, governments start printing money and then it causes hyperinflation. Um, in, um, in, in, in this sort of ecosystem, all the code is open source, and you can sort of read how, how, the, how the protocol works, so everything is very transparent, and also, if you don't like it, you can sort of go your own way, which sort of segues really nicely to the next point, which is it's, it's permissionless, right? So anyone can participate, anyone can um, launch their, their own sort of rules and their, their own tokens if they want to. And if they don't like the rules, they can always fork and create their own rules, right? And they can also create unstoppable programs, right? Like if they choose to censor someone, you can always build a new app that uses the same data because all the data is on the blockchain and the blockchain data is all shared with everyone. So if you don't like you know, how the rules of one um, app or company, you can always build your own um, differently and then share the same data. And you can also participate in securing the network, right? So anyone can sort of spin up a node or in proof of stake, stake their own tokens to sort of uh, sec secure the network. And any anyone can just participate very openly because everything's like on, on the internet. 
And which, which brings me to the next point, which is security, right? Like, even though you might read about um, scams, and th that does happen a lot, like a lot of individuals get scammed in the ecosystem, but a lot of times those attacks are not on a big surface area, right? Like, if, if you see like a data breach in a traditional database, a lot of people's um, private data get, get compromised, or if they're in a bank and that bank gets hacked, then a lot of people's funds are at stake, right? And then in, in sort of blockchains, it's very secure such that um, the attack surface area is usually only on the individual. So only individuals can get their funds compromised, but usually it doesn't leak out and it doesn't affect other users. Um, and there's also incentive alignment, right? Like people work together to sort of secure the network and at the same time they get rewarded in, in some type of way. And the more people that participate in this ecosystem, the more secure the network becomes. So that's also a property that's that's very good if you want something of value on the internet, right? You want it to be secure and you want it to be permissionless because you don't want someone to control and own the value that you inherently should be owning. So what are some of the, what are, what are people doing with Web3? Like what, what are some of the use cases that, that we sort of see? And like DeFi and NFTs are some of the bigger use cases, but I think like, not too many people really understand what, what's really happening. So DeFi is sort of like you can, do, uh, you can do finance without all the middlemen, right? And with NFTs, you can sort of own a unique, unique digital property. So I'll go into more detail what uh, these two things really mean. So with DeFi, like in, in traditional finance, maybe if you've had the experience of sending some funds overseas, right? Like if I want to send funds from Canada to Poland, for example, I might have to go through many clearing, uh, many, you know, clearing houses and then it might take a couple of days, right? And I, I, and I might need to pay fees from multiple institutions. Um, so like with DeFi, you don't really have that, right? Because you just have um, code running in the blockchain that facilitates the trust. Right, you don't need to trust all these institutions anymore. You just trust code that runs publicly on these, uh, on these like, databases or blockchains. And then another example would be like if you, if you want to exchange um, um, some sort of value, like I want a USD for Canadian, or if I want to buy some sort of stock, right, I need to open a brokerage to do that. Well, you can do that uh, in a decentralized fashion where you can swap tokens uh, just based on smart contracts, right? And then these contracts sort of facilitate um, the transfer between value of two parties. Um, and also even like loans, right? Like you don't need to go to a bank to get a loan. You can sort of um, get, get loans based on some parameters in, in code, and then you can do it very, very uh, permissionlessly. So this sort of gives you like more efficiency, right? A lot of transparency because a lot of this code is open source, and you got, get a lot more security. And um, yeah, and then when you actually program these, con these programs on the blockchain, they call them small, smart contracts, you, you really feel that money, became, money and value becomes programmable. And then there's NFTs, right? Obviously, like, um, there's a huge amount of hype in, in this ecosystem, but I think the, the really interesting use case here is like digital artists can really earn income by themselves. Right, like you typically digital artists, they need to work as part of a big institution, right? Like maybe a game company or a marketing agency. Um, it's very hard for them to be independent on the internet because like people just like command C, command B, right? But then now you can actually uh, cryptographically prove that you are the original artist of this piece of digital art. And that gives it um, a lot more value. And I think in terms of business models, it's also very good for creators because if I create a piece of NFT and then I sell it to Yannick and then Yannick sells it to someone else, I actually get secondary royalties. So in the, in the program, if I say like on every secondary sale, I get 5%, then like as, I, as, my, uh, as my art piece gets traded, I get rewarded um, with every transaction, right? So if you look at like some of the very unfortunate artists, great artists in our era, like Van Gogh or for example, a lot of the, his early artworks are worth the most, but unfortunately he's not able to capture a lot of that value as a, as a artist, right? And this sort of really helps with that because with every secondary sale, the primary artist also gets um, rewarded um, with each secondary sale. 
and also with um, digital assets like games as well, right? Like you're not tied to one ecosystem. Like maybe if I own a sword in uh, World of Warcraft, I can compose it and then use that same sword in another game, right? Because the ownership is really by me, and it's not really by these game companies that own the, own the assets and control it. So a lot of times if you're looking at um, the NFT ecosystem, a lot of developers are trying to bring value and utility to those, those assets instead of like the game company trying to own the entire, entire IP. So in that case, like in some way, culture becomes tokenized because if you create any like creative piece and you're trying to get um, eyeballs on it and then you can like trade on, on that very efficiently. So obviously, there's, it comes without, uh, without saying there's a lot of challenges in the, in the blockchain and crypto space. And I think the biggest one is like the blockchain trilemma, right? Like typically, you can only pick two out of the three. And if you look at um, some of the most valuable um, blockchains, like um, Bitcoin and Ethereum, they typically choose decentralized and also secure, which in my opinion, makes a lot of sense because if you want value on the internet, you probably want it to be decentralized because you don't want a single entity owning the value that you own, right? And you want it to be secure. So then if something gets compromised, not everyone is compromised. And at the expense, like it's not very scalable, right? Like if you run transactions on Bitcoin or Ethereum, it's extremely expensive. And um, because of that, there, there's, a, there's a big scaling, scaling challenge here. So StarkNet sort of aims to solve the um, scalability issue that we see in traditional blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum. So how it does that is um, with layer twos, right? Like even in Bitcoin, there's like Lightning Network, which sort of functions like a layer two as well. So if you look at StarkNet, um, StarkNet is a layer on top of Ethereum, right? So Ethereum is the layer one and StarkNet is the layer two. And what it does is it, it batches all these three transactions together, and then it turns it into a proof that sends, to, sends as a single transaction to Ethereum, and then Ethereum verifies that that proof is correct. Right? It's sort of, like, um, it's sort of like a bundling, right? If you have a lot of files and then you zip all these files into one zip, it's usually smaller, right? So in, in this case, it's taking a lot of transactions and then creating a cryptographic proof and then the, the layer one um, verifies that that uh, proof is correct. So you, you sort of get the properties of, uh, of uh, decentralization and security because the source of truth is still on layer one, right? But you also get the scalability of, uh, of a layer two. So users and developers will actually build on the layer two and then these transactions will be batched together and then settled on uh, Ethereum layer one. So typically what they call layer one blockchains, they call them settlement layers. And then with layer twos like StarkNet, they call them processing layers. So, so yeah. And then what you get is like over uh, up to 100 times um, transaction fee savings. Like I remember when I, sometimes when I bought NFTs, right? Like the NFT uh, transaction fee costs more than the NFT itself. And sometimes it costs like 50 to $200, right? So it's definitely not something that average users could, could, could accept. So finally, like what's, uh, what is StarkNet.js? So StarkNet.js is a library that I started and uh, collaborate very closely with, uh, uh, with Arjun on. And we're sort of the, the library that connects apps to the Layer 2 network. Right, so the library allows, allows apps to communicate to the network, like send transactions, you know, get data from the network to build uh, decentralized apps. So StarkNet.js actually works very nicely with uh, React Native. And um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll hand it off to Yannick, who will be giving, giving a demo of StarkNet.js in action with React Native. So thank you. Hello all. Um, yeah, I will do the demo on StarkNet.js inside of React Native. So we have learned what StarkNet.js is. But first of all, I will let you know the most important thing. It will be a short demo, so you will make it to the BS. Uh, it won't take too long, so don't worry about it, yes? All right, so first of all, I will show the wallet. Then I will just give a sneak peek into the code, um, just to cover, like, one single part of it, how to use StarkNet.js, which is our main library. 
Um, and then we have a little giveaway, um, 800 slotties, which I don't know how much it's worth. But um, yeah, so we will do that in a way which I will explain later. So I'm pretty sure all of you will have a look in the code today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> all right, cool. So it was my first time ever using React Native. So I'm pretty, I'm a little bit different than you all. Um, but yeah, the first time using React Native, it was quite easy to set up. And I was really surprised how well it worked with Starknet.js. So my company, uh, Argent, we are building a full wallet on top of Starknet currently, which you can see on the right, hopefully. Yeah. All right. Um, and this is like the customer grade product we are building. Um, the whole network is still in alpha, so it breaks like daily, but that's just expected. Um, on the left, you can see my neat little app.js demo, uh, which will be open sourced soon. Uh, and it's just using the same library, StarkNet.js, the same library we, were, we have used to build the Argent X wallet. So we are currently tackling the uh, Chrome extension part of things. If you may want to cover the React Native things, then I don't need to do this. <laughs> All right. So uh, we can just basically see an amount, like a balance for an address, which is down here. And you have basic functionalities like receive tokens and send tokens. Uh, token in this case is just Ether. Um, so I built a very simple app, and probably all of you will joke on me for the code quality on this. But uh, from, from my standards, it's working pretty well. So you, you can send and you can receive. And it's actually on the same network than our Argent X, obviously. And if somebody could explain how this like deprecation error can go away, that would be great. So we can send an amount to, to a recipient, uh, which is just the app. Um, and we need to pay a network fee on that, which is really tiny. So it's two cents US dollar currently, uh, which is one of the main benefits on Golly, uh, on, yeah, on Starknet, sorry. So if we sign that, uh, it will take some time network issues, but that's no, uh, no problem. So it, as you can see, the transfer went through. So it will take some time to arrive, but until it arrives, we will just have a look at the code, which is in the other direction. All right, so all I'm doing in React Native is I never escaped Expo, obviously, because I'm a noob, but I installed StarkNet, and you can just use every primitive of Starknet.js inside of React Native, which is pretty nice. Um, so yeah, this is just some React magic. Um, don't blame me for the code and for the hard-coded stuff. Um, yeah, so this is just a React hook, which has a couple of lines. And the most important part of these is that we need a secret uh, to prove that it's us. So we are randomly generating a secret. Um, and then the secret gets stored and gets reused all the time. Uh, normally, this would work differently, obviously, and would be bound to a user. Um, from that secret, we can derive an address, like a public key, crypt cryptographic key. So uh, with everybody who has a public key can verify transactions that we have made with the secret. And then from that, uh, plus a few other parameters, we can calculate an address, which is an address on top of StarkNet. Um, and given these uh, three values, we can initiate just the account primitive from StarkNet.js, which will provide us a bunch of uh, methods to do the most common things, like executing transactions, checking balances, all that stuff you would expect. So yeah, um, that's my very bad demo. 
Um, and to get to the last point, uh, I got my CEO to approve a little bit of money to give away, which is great. One of the benefits if you work on Web3. Um, and the whole code will be open sourced. So you can see the link in the presentation. And I would say first comes, first served. So if you find the secret inside of the demo code and you know how to use it, that's the tricky part, actually. Um, then congrats. You, are, you have won 200 US dollars, 800 slotty. All right, that's it. Yeah.